that that's why we're so obsessed with technology. Because it's not like this technology is really, I mean, it's certainly enhancing our lives to in a certain way, but is, I mean, ultimately, is it making people happier right now? Most technology, I would say no. In fact, you and I were talking about social media before this, about just not having Instagram on your phone and not dealing, mm -hmm. and you feel better. Yes, I think that one of the issues with social media, it's been pointed out by many people, is that um, I think maybe particularly Instagram, um, people look like they have a much better life than they really do. Right. So By design. Yeah, people are posting pictures of when they're really happy. They're modifying those pictures to be better looking. Um, even if they're not modifying the pictures, they're at least selecting the pictures for the best lighting, the best angle. Um, so people basically seem uh, uh, they're way better looking than they basically really are. Right. Um, and they're way happier seeming than they really are. So if you look at everyone on Instagram, you might think, man, they're all these happy, beautiful people, and I'm not that good looking, and I'm not happy. So I must suck, you know, and that's going to make people sad. So when, in fact, those people you think are super happy, actually, not that happy. Some of them are really depressed. They're very sad. Some of the happiest seeming people, actually some of the saddest people in reality. Um, and, and, and nobody looks good all the time. It doesn't matter who you are. No. It's not even something you should want. Why do you yeah. want to look great all the time? Yeah, exactly. So, uh, so I think, I think things like that can make people quite sad. Well, you um, just, just by comparison, because you, you just sort of, you, you, people, people generally think of themselves relative to, to others. It's, it's a, we are constantly re, re-baselining our expectations. Um, and you can see this, say, if you watch some show like Naked and Afraid or, you know, if you just <laughs> go and try living in the woods by yourself for a while and you're like, the learn that civilization is quite great. It has a lot, it's a lot of it. It's, people want to come back to civilization pretty fast on Naked what, and Afraid. Wasn't that a Thoreau quote? The comparison is a thief of joy? Yeah. Well, happiness is reality minus expectations. <laughs> That's great, too. But the comparison is a thief of joy really holds true to people. Is it? Theodore Roosevelt. Roosevelt. Fascinating. Um, and when you're thinking about Instagram, because what essentially Instagram is with a lot of people is you're giving them the opportunity to be their own PR agent. And they always go towards the glamorous. Mm -hmm. You know? And when any, anybody does show, you know, hashtag no filter. You know, <laughs> if they, if they really do do that. Like, oh, you're so brave. Look at you. No makeup. You know, yeah. which, they look good anyway. You look great. What are you doing? Oh my God, you don't have makeup on. You still look hot as f You know what you're doing. I know what you're doing too. They're, they're, they're letting you know. And then they're feeding off that comment section. Ooh, just a little <laughs> sitting there like, like it's a, a fresh stream of love. Like you're getting right up to the source as it comes out of the earth and you're sucking that a lot sweet, of, lot of sweet emojis. love water. It's emojis, emojis. Yeah. A lot of Weird. emojis. My, my concern is not so much what Instagram is is that I didn't think that people had the need for this or the expectation for some sort of technology that allows them to constantly get love and adulation from strangers and comments and, and this ability to project this sort of distorted version of who you really are. But I worry about where it goes. Like, what's the next one? What's the next one? Like, where is it? Is it going to be augmented? Is some sort of a weird augmented or virtual sort of Instagram type situation? where you're not going to want to live in this real world. You're going to want to interface with this sort of world that you've created through your social media page. It's some next level thing. It's yeah. Go live in the simulation. Yeah. I mean, it, in the simulation. Some Ready Player One type shit that's real. And how, how, how connected and interconnected is this technology going to be in our life? It will be at some point indistinguishable from reality where we'll lose this we'll lose this like you and I are just looking at each other through our eyes I see you you see me I think I hope you think so I think you probably have regular eyes this could be some simulation it could do you entertain that and I mean like the, the the strongest argument for the for us being in a simulation probably being in a simulation I think is the following um, that that 40 
called 40, 40 years ago, we had Pong, like two rectangles and a dot. That right. was what games were. Um, now, 40 years later, we have photorealistic 3D simulations with millions of people playing simultaneously, and it's getting better every year. And soon we'll have virtu you know, vir virtual reality, we'll have augmented reality. Um, if you assume any rate of improvement at all, um, then the games will become indistinguishable from reality. Just in indistinguishable. Um, e even if that rate of advancement drops by a thousand from what it is right now, um, then you just say, okay, well, well let's imagine it's a 10,000 years in the future, uh, which is nothing in the evolutionary scale. So, so given that we're clearly on a trajectory to have games that are indistinguishable from reality, and those games could be played on any set-top box or on a PC or whatever, and there would probably be you know, billions of such uh, you know, computers or set-top boxes, it would seem to follow that the odds that we're in base reality is one in billions. So Tell me what's wrong with that argument. Is the answer yes? <laughs> the argument is probably. I mean, I just like, is there is there a flaw in that argument? I mean, someone, but someone. I'm not that, sure what but, the error. In, right, no, no, the argument makes sense. So the assumption then is that somebody beat us to it, and this is a game. No, no, there's a one in billions chance that this is base reality. Oh, okay. What do you think? Well, I think it's one in billions. Okay. <laughs> hey, I, I mean, this, this that seems to be. Like clearly, what the you know what the, what it, what it suggests, right. and and actually, I mean, arguably, we should hope that that's true, because otherwise, if if civilization stops advancing, then that may be due to some calamitous event that erases civilization. So maybe we should be hopeful that this is a simulation, because otherwise, because they could reboot it. Well, otherwise. Either we're going to create simulations that are indistinguishable from reality or civilization will cease to exist. Those are the two options.